I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. Or we might say, I am too old. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young or too old. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and he touched my mouth and he said to me, I have put my words into your mouth. Lord Jesus, we come today, we call upon your precious and holy name, that powerful name of Jesus, and we welcome you into this midst, Lord, to send your spirit to touch these lives and all that are here. We ask, Lord, that you come as we call upon your name, the name of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the one set apart. That name we invoke, Lord. For you to come and be amongst us, to touch us, to change our very lives. So we call upon you now, Lord, to join us now. We ask this in your precious and holy name. In Jesus, amen. 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 amen.
Since the days of the apostles, throughout the scriptures, God has used sacred offices and ministries to guide the church to the fulfillment of its earthly purpose. The earliest record of ancient Christian writers have included holy rituals that have given the Christian church its character and majesty. The Old and New Testaments contain depictions of God's design and relationship to the church. The New Testament in particular gives fine points that outline the character and duties of the post-resurrection church. The scriptural models highlight the orders or ordained ministers, ministries, excuse me, that give expression to the character of the Christian church. The New Testament scriptures and Book of Common Prayer outline the use and purpose of these sacred offices. The orders of ministers or are those who are called to lead and unite the church. They guide and teach others to fulfill Christ's commission in the world. The presbyters or ministers are charged to govern, to shepherd, proclaim the gospel, administer the Lord's ordinances, and strengthen the church missionary zeal. <laughs> the diaconate or deacons assist the bishop and ministers in all areas of ministry which also includes ministry to the sick, poor, and disenfranchised. The church recognizes those who are capable and called of God by ordaining them to the work of ministry. Their ability and gifting are acknowledged through ceremonial prayer and the laying on of hands. Those who are called are forever associated with the redemptive plan of God for peace and reconciliation in the world. The act of consecration is a public affirmation 
of the servant's call and pledge of lifelong commitment to the cause of Christ and his church. The chronicles of these ancient offices dates back to the first century. Each minister receives his consecration through the laying on of hands. This act confers upon the recipient the history and purpose of the office. Ministers and members of the diaconate are consecrated by other ministers who are qualified to confer upon the recipient the rights and responsibilities of their office. This act of consecration is a blessing from God for the edifying, nurturing, and sharing of the gospel throughout the world. Those whom God calls are publicly set apart by him for a special work. Hence, our candidates join a long-standing tradition of those called to serve the greater church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the reason that we have gathered here today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> the Old Testament scripture is coming from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and we will begin at the eighth verse. One second. Reach up blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that has ears, and all the nations be gathered together, and let the people assemble. Who among them can declare this and show us performer things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is true. Ye are the witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after me. This is the word of the Lord. Isaiah 43, verses 8 through 10. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The New Testament reading comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It's chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit to your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power, that is, at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. from the gospel reading John chapter 12 beginning in the 20th verse now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship the festival they came to Philip who was from Bethesda in Galilee with a request sir they said we would like to see Jesus and Philip went to tell Andrew and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus and Jesus replied the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. 
Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. And anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. May God speak to us in the reading of his word. Amen. 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 You know, as we move into this time of giving, I wanted to bring something to kind of relate to that scripture that we just read. Now, I don't have a kernel of wheat, but I bought, brought a corn of, uh, seed from corn. And I went up and I looked and I said, well, how many ears does one stalk of corn produce? And the average is about three ears per corn stalk. And so how many kernels of corn are in each ear? And the average is about 800. So that means one seed that goes into the ground will produce 2,400. As you prepare your time for giving, realize that the seed that you plant in your giving, both in your monetary giving and in your time, yields so much more in the kingdom of God. Let us take this time now to give of our offerings and our tithes. <laughs> that you have set apart 
in the lives of these people that they have given back unto you, Lord, from the works of their hands, so that the work of your son can go out into the, even to the ends of the earth. So, Lord, we ask that you bless these offerings that we give unto you, Lord. And may they reach far and wide. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Then Jesus came to them. Thank you. 
And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So I'd like to share with our candidates today a word that says, things to know before you go. Things to know before you go. When the disciples saw the resurrected Christ, they worshipped him, it says. So before you go, remember to worship. Remember who he is. Remember what he's done for you. Remember, he's the one that has loved you best. Jesus taught that they worship, must worship God, what, how, in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks those who worship him. God is looking for true worshipers today. Not just folks who are going through the emotions and the emotions of a praise, but he's looking for people whose ardor, that means your strong love and devotion, that would cause you to break into a spontaneous praise. In other words, I'm worshiping you because of what you are, who you are to me. You know, you love someone, you express your love for them, not just because it's them, but, but it's because of how you feel about them. And God has loved us with an everlasting love. And so remember before you go, always worship, always be willing to show your reverent love for God, and to always give him the praise for what he has done, and then more importantly, for who he is. When you worship God for who he is, and uh, do it not just because who he is, but what? Because he is God alone. Sometimes we do get these things confused. We confuse praise with worship, and we confuse worship with praise. Worship is done from the heart. Praise is the ultimate expression of your worship. We sometimes think that during the time we have in the service called praise and worship, that's just being a part of the service. In actuality, praise and worship is an expression of our service. Our service to God is expressed greatly when we give him the honor, we give him the praise that is due his name. Our praise and expression of, of our love and our devotion for him. Our praise is also how we give expression to the feeling that we have for the one that we say we adore. So one of the things to know before you go, always praise and always worship. Another thing to know before you go is this. The next thing you find in the text, if you look at it closely, there's one little insignificant sentence that I didn't read, but at the end of verse 17, it says, when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. So another thing you should know before you go is that not everyone will believe your report. Not everyone will be happy for what God is doing in your life. Not everyone will even understand what God is doing in your life. Sometimes you don't even understand what God is doing in your life. Not everyone will appreciate your call. No matter what God has called you to do, you will have to do it despite those who will doubt. You cannot let the fact that others doubt that Jesus called you and commissioned you to stop you. You've been called to change the world. Amen. No one can stop you from changing the world in which you live. You cannot let the doubt of others affect your motives. You cannot let the doubt of others affect your mission. But not everyone is going to believe your report. Not everyone is going to receive what God has to offer you. So sometimes it means you may have to go by yourself. But if you do, God has promised in his word, what? That he will always be with you. And the third thing, the last thing you must know before you go, that we have no power other than what is given to us by God. Mm -hmm. After we get our worship right, and we are determined not to be deterred by doubt, we are now ready to take the gospel to the world. So the last thing you must keep in mind before you go is that God is not concerned about your ability. He's concerned about your availability. We're told to go to make disciples. In order to do that, we must be totally dependent upon the Lord. And really, apart from him, we have no ability to really do this. We must obey the Lord's commands. We must go where he says us to go and do what he tells us to do. But we can only fill the mandate by actually doing it and actually by going. Going means I'm going to give my life in service to the Lord as we're doing today. And it's not just this day, but it's all the days of my life. 
So it's not just enough to assemble ourselves together. After doing this, we must be obedient and go. Go and teach. Go and tell others the good news. And let them know the great God who has done some great things for your life. At a minimum, you can be the witness. And in that witness, you will become the light of the world. Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. He said, it is the turn of hell that cannot be hid. Before you go, remember these things. Amen. 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 recently rescued Buddy, a small puppy from Mississippi. He has the heart of a teacher, excuse me, she has the heart of a teacher, and from time to time, or should I say from the time she could read, Barbara has tenaciously studied the Bible and has grown even stronger in her love for God. As she continues her walk with Christ, she has learned more of what God wants from her and how truly powerful his spirit is. Barbara is eager to share her journey with everyone and sincerely desires to help all she needs come to know God as he has intended. Amen. 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 Minister-elect Mary D. Boulay. Curiosity brought Mary and her husband to the chapel in 2014. Since that time, Mary has been an active member in many areas of the chapel, starting as a lay deacon and a lay preacher and a very active participant with the fall and spring fairs. Currently, she is answering the call to the pastoral care team, as well as board member. She is a consummate baker. Amen, Candleberry? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and one of her favorite ways to participate is during the coffee fellowship hour, immediately following our gatherings on Sunday morning. Minister-elect Leo C. Pettibon, better known as Chuck, to his friends. He joined the chapel when another family member invited him. After attending several months of services, he and his wife, Masha, they are, they are a match set, by the way, if you know them, <laughs> decided that this was a fine fit for their spiritual needs and became members. Chuck has an eye for the details and has served faithfully in many areas of this chapel, including being the head deacon and the lay preacher and and now for a new member of the pastoral care team. Chuck was a busy man at all chapel fairs. Chuck's a busy man, period. Wherever he is needed, he can be depended upon to be there and ensure that all things are done with excellence and grace. Deacon-elect Patricia A. Packer. She has been a dedicated member of Canterbury Chapel since early 2006. Pat is always ready to be of service and has served in many ways over the years. Currently, she's answering the call to serve on the pastoral care team, which is responsible for supporting the congregation spiritually and emotionally. She has been instrumental in assisting with the church fairs, baking, yard sale, offering collections, ministering to the sick and shut in, and basically anywhere else help is needed. We can count on Pat Packer to be there. Deacon elect Ryan C. Old Mixon. Back in 2010, when Ryan and his wife Diana, who is glad is videoing for me today, hi, God, hi Diana, were looking for a church to be married in. 
They found not just a church, but a home and a family here at Candleberry. Since then, Ryan has continued to serve in several capacities. One of the reasons why I'm here as the pastor is because Ryan was the head of the search committee that brought me to Candleberry. Many of you didn't know that. Including, currently now, the pastoral care team, as well as a lay preacher and overseeing the church's media and digital outreach ministry. So our Facebook, our Instagram, that's Ryan, and Ryan's helping me stay organized in those areas. Thank you, Ryan, for that. You've all helped I can get. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Bishop Manigault, this day we present to you these men and women. They have, found faith, they have been found faithful in their service to the Lord and to his people. We therefore bring them now to be set apart for consecration as deacons. If the candidates would please rise and stand and face the congregation. saying, Whom shall I send? And I said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Hold on, we have to start again. <laughs> Let's do this again. Well, you're first, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barbara was, Mr. Barbara was listening. <laughs> no, take six. Take six. Okay. All right. Try that again. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And, and I, I said, said, Here I am, Lord, send me. Do you trust that you were truly called by God to the diaconate in this church? I do so trust. trust. Are you committed to ministering to those in need, to explaining salvation in Jesus, and to calling forth greater discipleship to Christ? By God's grace, I am so committed. Will you seek to provide an upright example by your total life, your words, your attitude? your behavior, and your family life that will point others to Christ? I will with God's help. Are you committed to upholding the fellowship of Christ Church at Canterbury Chapel, doing all you can to support, affirm, and undergird its ministry through your presence, your possessions, and your witness? I am. am. The Lord, Lord be my inspiration and, and my helper. Who ask the congregation that you would stand? <laughs> These are the people that stand before us today having declared their readiness to serve in the diaconate of this church. And I ask you, the church, to declare your affirmation of them for this work. If you agree, say, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. May be seated in the congregation. Seeing that we are not sufficient in of ourselves and that our strength comes from God, do you trust that these people are by the grace of God worthy to be installed and ordained as deacons? If so, please respond by saying amen. 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 Dear God, our Father in heaven, what could we do without your grace and without your presence? For truly it is your presence and your spirit that gives us life. Even now, Father, as I pray this afternoon, I pray that your spirit of peace, your spirit of truth, your spirit of love would be at would rest richly upon these who are being ordained to the diaconate. Open up the intellect of their mind. Open up their hearts. May they understand your word in their mind. May they believe your word in their hearts. May their hands be swift to do your will. And may their feet walk according to the path that you lay out before them. 
Let your light so shine in them that all men will see their good works and glorify you. May they be salt and light. Let the gospel be upon their lips, ever upon their heart and ever in their mind. Fill them even now with your Holy Spirit and with your power. Rest on them and in them. Make them on fire for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So on the deacon's pen, the deacons, the deacons wear a cross which represents Christ, but also they wear uh, it wears a sash that goes diagonally across the body, which is supposed to represent the servant's towel, because deacons are servants within the church. So you'll notice that the pens are gold, which represents the majesty and the holiness of Christ, but also the red sash, which also represents service. The scripture says that after dinner, Jesus got up, he tied a towel around his waist, and he began to wash the disciples' feet. That's what this is representative of. Amen? Amen. 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 These are their certificates of ordination. <coughs> Barbara Berla, and Mary Eagleway, and Leo Chuck Pettibon, and Mr. Trisha A. Packer, and Ryan I hereby declare that Barbara Berlin, Mary D. Boulay, Leo C. Pettibone, Patricia A. Packer, and Ryan C. O. Mixon are duly ordained as deacons. May we as ministers, deacons, and church members work together with them as they seek God's will and labor to fulfill it. Amen. 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 This day, Bishop, um, excuse me, Bishop Manigault, this day, Sister Barbara, Sister Mary, and Brother Leo have come forth from among us. They are responding to their call by the Holy Spirit to be licensed to the work of ministry. 
On behalf of the Board of Directors of Canterbury Chapel, Inc., and as the Senior Pastor of Canterbury Chapel, we affirm their fitness for this work and present Barbara, Mary, and Leo as faithful servants of God to be licensed as ministers in Christ's Holy Church. We express our confidence in their ability, in their character, in their devotion to Christ and to the Lord's Church. We therefore ask you to lay your hands upon them and consecrate them as ministers according to the word of God. My brother and sisters, ministers are by God's grace to be licensed to ministry. Those authorized by the church to do so to do so, have discerned that these ministers are people of sound learning and of Christian character. They possess the necessary gifts and evidence of God's grace, and have demonstrated a profound commitment to serve Jesus Christ. Therefore, we believe them to be duly called of God to serve in this ministry. I'm going to ask the congregation if they would stand one more time, please. And we ask you, people of God, to declare your assent to the licensure of these ministers. Do you trust that they are worthy by God's grace to be licensed? We do. We do. Thanks be to God. Will you uphold them in their ministry? With God's help, we will. Are you willing to uphold Barbara Berlin, Mary B. Boulay, Leo C. Pentapon as ministers? We will. We will by God's grace of God. Thank you. You may be seated. My brother and sisters, a minister in the church and covered it with other ministers in this august body is called to share in the ministry of Christ in the whole church, to preach and to teach the word of God, and to fully administer and faithfully administer the sacraments of baptism and holy communion, to lead the people in, of God in worship and in prayer, to lead persons to faith in Jesus Christ, to exercise pastoral supervision of the people committed to your care. As a minister, you're called to order the life of the congregation, counsel the trouble, declare the forgiveness of sin, to lead the people of God in obedience to the mission in the world, to seek justice and peace and freedom for all people, and to take responsibility in the government of the church and render service into and for the community. These are the duty, the duties of a minister. Do you believe that God calls you to the life and the work of a minister? I do, I do so believe. And will you give yourself to God through the office of ministers to sustain and build up each other in prayer, study, worship, and service. I will, I will with the help, help of my, my sisters, sisters and brothers. brothers. Are you persuaded that God has called you to the office of minister? I am, I so, am so persuaded. Will you accept this call in obedience to Christ? I will obey Christ, Christ and will serve, serve in his name. name. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of the Holy Scriptures that you will continue to have the mind of Christ? I will, I will for, he for he is my help. help. Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ, enlightening the mind and stirring up the conscience of the people? I will, as the, as the Holy, Holy Spirit shall you. As a minister and leader, will you encourage and support all baptized believers in their gifts and ministries, nourish them for the riches of God's grace, pray for them without ceasing, and celebrate with them the sacraments of our redemption? I will, will in the name of Christ, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. souls. Will you guide the faith, unity, and the discipline of the church? I will, I will by, by the grace, grace of God. Will you share with your fellow ministers in the government of the <laughs> whole church? Will you sustain your fellow presbyters and take counsel with them? And will you guide and strengthen the diaconate and all others who minister in the church? I, I will, will, by the grace of God. God. Will you be merciful to all, show compassion to the poor and strangers, and defend those who have no helper? I will, for the sake of Christ, who has called me. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray to these brethren who are now here to be licensed as ministers. We praise you, eternal God, because you have called us in your infinite love to be a priestly people offering an acceptable worship of Jesus Christ. Apostle, high priest, shepherd, and bishop of our souls, we thank you that by dying 
Christ has overcome death and having ascended to heaven, has poured forth gifts abundantly upon your people, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. God, you've given them to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ, the church, and to fulfill your gracious purpose in the world. Give this to your servants, the grace and power they need to serve you in this ministry. Make them a faithful leader, patient teacher, and wise counselor. Enable them to serve without reproach, to proclaim the gospel of salvation, to administer the sacraments of the new covenant, and to offer with all of your people spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to you. Therefore, Father, we pray that you consecrate Barbara Berlin, Mary D. Belay, Leo C. Pettibon, as ministers in your church. Pour out upon them the power of your princely spirit, whom you bestowed upon your beloved son, Jesus Christ, with whom he endowed the apostles, and by whom your church is built up in every place, to the glory and the unceasingly praise of your name. Amen. 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 We're not going to have the investiture of the ministers. placement around the neck also is there to remind us that we are under the yoke of the Spirit of God as to our word, our thoughts, and our deeds.
like to read that scripture we read earlier then we'll pray my brother and sisters this is the Lord speaking to you I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, and how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on our sister now and consecrate it to the work of the ministry that you have committed unto her. And we thank you for the life that she has committed unto you. Now, Lord, do within her and with her according to your good will. We bless her. We acknowledge, O oh God, the call upon her life. Send her forth, O oh God, as a witness in this world. And we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we lay hands on our sister. And Lord, in doing so, we acknowledge the work that you have given her to do. Thank you, Lord, for allowing her to answer your call. Thank you, Lord, for enabling her and empowering her and even emboldening her to stand for you this day. Help her, O oh God, as she journeys on this path. Make the way plain before her. Give wisdom and guidance even now in the name of Jesus. Uphold her by your word and by your power. Let your word dwell in her richly. That your God she may speak forth as an oracle of God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Lord, we lay hands on this brother. We ask you also to touch him. Thank you for the journey in which you have brought him. And Lord, help him, Lord, now as he walks this road. Lead him and guide him. Strengthen him and give him boldness to speak, even as you have spoken to him. Lord, you know you have made him for such a time as this. So we pray for his strength and we pray for his courage, that your will will be done in his life. Thank you, Lord, for the call. Thank you for the answer. Help, O oh Lord, to walk now in this journey with us. Thank you for, Lord, being a soldier in the battle. Keep the blessing and strength of him now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand if you don't mind. This time we're going to have um, communion, the first communion as uh, deacons and ministers of the gospel. And so it is fitting that we have communion together because truly we are baptized into one work, into one body, into one Lord. We utilize matzo bread <coughs> at times for community here at Kingleberry. What's interesting about matzo bread is it's really representative of the body of Christ. You will notice that it is multicolored and it is bumpy and lumpy and uneven. This is a symbol of the beating that Christ took on our behalf. They took the cat of nine tails and they, they, they reached back and they whipped him. And in the cat of nine tails was bone and glass and leather. And each time as they pulled away the whip from his body, it tore his flesh. The scripture says that he was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace fell upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. That is what this matzo bread symbolizes. The body of Christ that was broken for you and for me. When he gathered with his disciples, he said, this is my body, 
which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after dinner, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. I want you to remember, even today, as you eat the bread and drink the cup, that you are eating and drinking the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are eating and drinking the sacrifice and the work that it will take to carry out your commission that he has given you, ordained you to, and licensed you to today. Amen? Amen. 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 Ministers, if you would assist me in handing out the cups. <clears throat> Wherever their feet shall trod, that you'll be right with them. Remind them, God, that you're on their side and that you love them with an everlasting love. Help them to carry out the mission that you've given them to do. In the name of Jesus. We lift you up, God, and we give you the praise. In spite of, we give you the praise. When things are good, help them to give you the praise. When things are bad, help them to give you the praise. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for these servants, you God, for who's decided to dedicate their thank life to them that much more. Yes, that there might be a witness to you, God. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, pour upon Minister Barbara Burlett, Minister Mary D. Bouet, and Minister Leo C. Pettibon, Deacon Pat Packer, and Deacon Rhino Mixon. Bless them in their office of deacon and minister. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, Deacon Packer is going to be our Deacon of Mercy. Totally. What that means is she's responsible for making sure that the people who are sick and shut in, who are in the hospital, who need uh, care or prayer, it's her responsibility to make sure that myself and all the other ministers and deacons and the church are aware of those in need and that we are adequately ministering <coughs> to those needs. Amen. Widows Amen. who may need food or delivery, yeah. whatever the case may be. It will be the Deacon of Mercy, Deacon Pat Packer's role here at Kendallbury to make sure that that happens. Amen? Amen. Amen. Deacon Ryan Oak Mixon will be responsible for our um, digital media and our outreach. We live in the 21st century, everybody, in case you didn't know. <laughs> and there is Facebook, and we know it's the devil, but we still got to use it sometimes, right? And, but there are, there are ways in which we can reach outside the doors of Canterbury to others in this community. Ryan's role will be to assist us in doing that, be it digitally, be it whatever way possible. He will be assisting us in outreach outside of Amen. the doors. So he is our deacon of outreach. Amen? Amen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give this to you, Pastor McMillan. I know that Minister Chuck is a good friend of yours. Yes, he is. <laughs> Minister Chuck has to hand him his uh, licensure as Minister of the Gospel. His role will be to lead at Candlebury in the role of Ministry Leader of Men's Ministry here at Candlebury. Amen. 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 <laughs> Minister Mary Boulet. No, her role is not going to be Minister of Baking. <laughs> <laughs> that was just too easy. <laughs> she does that all for free. But her role is, so as we strengthen the men, we must also strengthen our women. So Minister Mary Goulet will be the ministry leader of the women's ministry at Canterbury. <laughs> and my dear friend and teacher, Minister Barbara Burla. She will be responsible for making sure that all of us who are married people continue to stay married and our marriages are strengthened and encouraged based on the model that Christ has given us in the Bible. Amen. So she will be our minister of couples ministry. Amen. And I'm going on behalf. 
communication. <laughs> All right. So, Minister Barbara Burleth, Minister Mary D. Boulay, Minister Leo Chuck, Leo Chuck Pettibon, take authority as the minister in the church to preach the word of God and to administer the holy sacraments in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And now, I know I, I got out of the program more, but I don't care. I'm a senior pastor. I can do what I want. <laughs> now I will give to you your gifts of office. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. In season and out of season. Amen. Large print. Yeah. Large, large print. <laughs> Thumb index. Yes. Okay. And high application. I set you up right, didn't I? Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> At this time, you may take your seats from. Thank you, Minister. <laughs> Have no fear, we're almost done. It's almost time to eat. At this time, I want to give our new deacons and new ministers an opportunity to greet you all, such as they are led by the Spirit. <coughs> Put in me. All right. 
As I take this step today, I will follow the words from Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Thank you, all my family, my chapel family, and my friends for your love and support. Good afternoon. Um, I had something written completely. Oh my God. And, oops, sorry. Thank you. I had something written and couldn't find it this morning. And so that just adds to the truth that the evil one has been playing with my mind for the last season. Um, am I worthy? Should I even be in this class? Should I be doing this? And I know the pastor and my team have had faith in me, and my friends and family have also had faith in me, and so I know that with that faith in me and with God's help, um, that this is a job that I've always wanted to do. Um, I started out with having faith from a time that I can first remember. I don't remember ever not having faith. And Faith has been my guiding stone through my entire life. Um, I've never lost my faith. I've never had any reason to lose my faith. And I feel my faith is what gets me through every single thing. And so my faith has led me here. Um, the, other, the other part that I wanna say is I have had absolutely the most wonderful partner in my life who when I first met him, um, I learned that he was born a Baptist, born and raised a Baptist. And I thought, well, that's a good, strong possibility for me. I like that idea very much. And so we ended up dating and getting married. And Jeff has been my strength, my support, my guide. He has been everything that has supported me and led me to where I am today. And so I have to say thank you to Jeff because he's always been there for me. He shows his Christian love in so many ways. Um, and I have to thank God for him as well because he's just been truly a great friend and great person to have as my partner. So thank you. I didn't realize, I was christened as a child, as 12 years old I think I was, and um, I wasn't submerged, I wasn't put in water at that. And it, I was told I was baptized, but at that point it didn't occur to me that I hadn't truly been baptized in the water and the blood of Jesus. And when we did the baptism at Spring Lake a um, little over a year ago, um, I came out of that water and felt such incredible peace and joy. I was literally speechless. Um, I couldn't talk to anyone for a while. It took, me, it took me a few hours before I could actually say anything. And I continue to be speechless in the power of the Lord and what he has been able to do for me uh, and my family and how we have been so cared for and so loved. And I want to pass that message along to everyone. I want everyone to know that God loves you. God believes in you, he trusts you. He doesn't see your flaws and your failures. He sees you as perfect, as his child. And I hope I can live up to that. Um, I'm very humbled by this experience. And I'd like to thank everybody that's here today for coming for us and, and being our support. And I'd love to thank you, Bishop, for the teachings that you've given us. They've been absolutely outstanding. Um, so that's my little piece. <laughs> thank you. Amen. 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 This time, Bishop Manigault will give us our final blessing. And after Bishop Manigault gives us our final blessing, we will recess to a mighty fortress is our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Could I ask everyone to stand, please? Truly, we thank God for what he is doing here at Candleberry. It has been my truly privilege and honor to be a part of that, and I am so grateful to God is in charge of our lives and he puts people together for his own purposes and he is the master of working things around so that his will is always done and he's doing a great thing here in this ministry uh, i am very blessed to see it 
Uh, you should be very blessed to be a part of it. We thank God for what he's doing. Be encouraged in the Lord. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Um, we've only begun to fight. But we win all the time. Amen. 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 We already won. <laughs> we already won. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we love you now. We bless you for all that eyes have seen and ears have heard. Truly, you are an amazing God. And Lord, there are no words to describe your love. There's no words to describe the grace. And Lord, there's no words to describe the power of your love that has changed all of our lives. And we come humbly, Lord, now, asking that you would continue to lead and guide us. Help us to be salt and light in this world. Help us, the Lord, be ready to give an answer to the hope that is within us, to anyone who would hear. Lord, I pray finally you strengthen my brethren and my sisters, my brothers and sisters, as we come together, Lord, to do your work your way. Lead us by your spirit. Help us be obedient to your word, that you may get glory from our lives. And now, Lord, as we prepare to leave from this place, but never from your presence, we ask that you bring us back safely yet together at the appointed time. This we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Put your hands together. Give a little hand.